Observer.com. Let's get this raw report out of the way. Then we'll take your feedback and maybe your calls in the next segment. I mean, there was good stuff on this show. Yeah. Did you watch it? Man, Matt Riddle came out crying. I was crying. He was so sad to have lost that match and his friend Randy. Randy's been having a rough time the last couple of years. Back hurts. He's just in pain all the time. And he knew Randy didn't want to let him down, but he let Randy down. And Randy's not here tonight. And he looked in the camera and he says, Randy, I just want you to know I love you. Fans are practically crying. This is a very heart-wrenching little segment right here. Then it led to a match, or led to a match, Riddle and the Street Profits versus Sammy and uh, the Usos. Because uh, this, I mean, they haven't officially said anything, but the brand extension is, it's essentially done. Uh, half of the Raw crew is going to be on SmackDown Friday. Cody's going to be there. I think Seth is going to be there. They're just doing whatever. And it makes for a better show, as we've mentioned a thousand times. So anyway, uh, ended up with the Usos walking out on Sami Zayn. So, Sami Zayn's all by himself, one on three. Riddle hits him with the RKO and pins him. And they talk about how Riddle has, has gotten his revenge. I was like, he has? Anyway, he won. So that was nice. Uh, we had the Bobby Lashley Almighty Challenge. And it was essentially Bobby Lashley coming out. And, and Lashley's not, like, a great promo. But uh, the thing is, like, he's a, he's a legitimate bad dude. And so if the right guy, you know, starts, you know, saying the right things, he's actually pretty good. So he's challenged MVP to a match. And if the winner gets to choose the stipulations for Lashley versus Omos at Hell in a Cell. So, uh, you know, MVP is like, uh, he doesn't really want to do the, the match. And so Lashley asks if he's scared. And so then MVP launched into this promo about, I'm not scared. I made you. I'm a former blah, blah, blah. And then Lashley, Lashley gets all riled up, and he starts, I'm going to kick your ass tonight. It was actually turned into a pretty good promo segment. That was the entire first hour of the show, by the way. The whole first hour was those two segments. Then the Judgment Day comes out, and they stand in the ring for eight minutes while they do commercials and backstage interviews with Dana Brooke and, and uh, this and that, Becky Lynch. Then they come back, and they talk for another eight minutes. And so after about 16 minutes, it's finally time for a match. What did they talk about, you ask? You know what they talked about. It's because of the fans. It's the fans' fault. Eight minutes of it's because of you fans. And it's even funnier because they're supposed to be heels and the fans are supposed to hate them. And the first thing that, uh, that uh, Damian Priest says is, all rise. And, bro, you look in the background, and all the fans rise. <laughs> they rise. He says, all rise. And they're like, oh, he told us to stand up. And they all stand up. And poor Damien Priest has to look around and go, I said all rise. Like, they're not listening to him, even though they did. <laughs> these fans, these WWE fans are something else nowadays. So, anyway, they had a match. It was Rhea and Damien Priest versus Liv Morgan and AJ Styles. I do like, by the way, that uh, my fav- one of my favorite wrestling names in the last decade was Punishment Martinez, which was the name of Damian Priest before they changed his name. So they can't call him that. But Edge repeatedly refers to him as The Punishment, which is awesome. So anyway, they had a good match. And uh, Edge, of course, interfered multiple times and finally cost Liv Morgan the win, Ripley Pinder. And then the babyfaces get beaten, and then they get beaten up. You know, heat. So they're all killed. We had a Miz promo. Oh, God help me. We had Jerry Lawler's Kinks Court with Veer Mahan. Veer Mahan is the biggest, scariest, most intimidating guy in storyline. So, you know, 70-something-year-old Jerry Lawler goes out there. He just tells a bunch of jokes and makes fun of the guy. And uh, they did do a, a quick promo with Veer. And then Lawler starts making more jokes. And now Veer's like, well, I, gotta, I guess i got to kill you now. And so the Mysterios run out, and they uh, clear the ring of Veer Mahan. So it looks like we're going to have multiple handicap matches at the pay-per-view because, you know, in WWE, it's like they have 40 writers, but they all have the same one idea. So, you know, that's what happens. Here are their one ideas. Uh, handicap matches. I think we're going to have two at the pay-per-view. 
uh, the gimmick where you tease a count out and then the guy flies into the ring and then immediately gets pinned. We've seen that uh, three times in the last two weeks between Raw and SmackDown. We saw it again on this show. Alexa Bliss promo. Uh, Alexa Bliss is, I mean, my God, this was... <laughs> She's happy to be back. Let's just leave it at that. Then we had Alexa Bli- uh, beating Nikki Ash. We've seen this match. Uh, you know, we saw it last week. We're seeing it again. It was the same match. She won. Okay. Third hour. They did the, the countdown clock for Cody. Cody's going to be showing up 9.50 or whatever. So uh, they play his music. He comes down. Crowd's going crazy. He's going to get to the ring. They shut the lights off, and they just stand there for eight minutes because we got a commercial. Asuka video package. Asuka interview. Finally, The Miz does his entrance. And I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but uh, uh, Cody's first match back was with The Miz, and he beat him. Well, here we are. I got an idea. Let's just do it again. So they do the same match we've already seen. Nobody believes The Miz is beating Cody. Miz has his good days, and he has his days that aren't so good. This was one of those days. Boring match. Miz is underwater. Slow motion. And finally, Cody goes up top, and uh, and Seth Rollins comes down and shoves him off the top, and it's a DQ. Yeah. So uh, he beats up Cody, and then earlier, Cody had given his weight belt to some youngster, and so for heat, Seth goes and steals it back from the youngster, and he goes and he just gives... It's only one whack, but man, he whacked Cody. Whacks him with this belt and leaves. And then Cody's, he's limping. He's selling his leg. His back's all messed up. And he goes and he gives the belt back to the kid. What a baby face. My God. <laughs> so then, you know, talking about matches that we've seen before. Because, you know, I, uh, how many wrestlers do they have between two brands? God, I've seen the same matches over. I'm losing it now. I'm trying to reel myself in. Reel myself in. Let it go. Come on, let it no. go. It's cathartic. Do it. We see Ezekiel and Chad Gable again. This is the third match we're seeing again here in the last couple of weeks. Last week, it was at least good because Kevin Owens was on commentary. He was awesome. It was the best thing on the show. Well, this week, it's WWE, so it's like, well, no one was paying attention to the match because of Kevin Owens, so he can be there, but he can't talk. So he's at ringside, but they don't let him do commentary. These blokes, oh, four minutes, nothing happened in match. I was begging for them to put the headset on Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, like, he's off screen. He's like, he's lying. He's a liar. And I'm like turning up the volume so I could only hear Kevin Owens because the only interesting thing about this, I almost said a bad word, about this stupid match. And then, uh, and then you'll never guess. Actually, Ezekiel pinned him. There was multiple interference, but the the referee was was fine with it. And then uh, Ezekiel got a cradle for the pin. So then Ezekiel bails. Kevin Owens wants a match with Ezekiel at uh, Hell in a Cell. And whoop de doo Cody Rhodes promo where he uh, talked about Hell in a Cell. MVP versus Lashley. This match, my God. MVP has not wrestled in a long time, and he's coming off knee surgery. And uh, this is one of those matches where... You know, Jerry Lawler, they don't let Jerry Lawler do anything, but Jerry Lawler is wrestling, like, multiple matches every week on the indies. And, you know, you're thinking, well, man. And then, you know, like, Ric Flair's got his match and everybody's worried about it. Dude, these guys went three minutes, and I don't think MVP did one move in this whole match. He did one running Yakuza kick in the corner. He did nothing in this match. And uh, finally, uh, they're outside, and... (laughs) Bobby Lashley and Omos start brawling. The referee's looking right at him on the outside. They're brawling outside the ring. This is not a DQ. Instead, the ref goes, eight, nine, ten. He counts out Lashley as he's brawling with Omos, who is not in the match. So MVP wins. He gets to choose a stipulation. It will be a handicap match at Hell in a Cell. MVP and Omos against Lashley at Hell in a Cell. And then the announcers explain, well, you know, they were brawling, but the ref never saw Lashley 
hit Omos. He only saw Omos. Or no, it was the other way around. He never saw Omos hit Lashley. He only saw Lashley hit Omos. So it wasn't a DQ. It's like, well, that's fine, but why are you counting the guy out? Lacey Evans returns next week. Then the main event, Becky Lynch and Asuka. In real life, they got 11 minutes. But in your life, they got six. Because we had uh, a commercial break right in the middle of the match. It's like, they did the same thing they always do. Bianca does her entrance. There's literally 21 minutes left in the show. So they could have had like a really good match. But Bianca enters. And then they go to commercial. And then Asuka does her entrance. And then Becky has to do her entrance. And they finally start the match. And then they go immediately to commercial. And they come back and there's six minutes left. And boom, 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 boom. They did the same finish I was just mocking a moment ago. Asuka tries to kick Becky. She kicks Bianca. Becky tries to throw Asuka into the table, but they screw up the spot and Asuka just falls down. Becky jumps in the ring and she wants Asuka to get counted out. Asuka makes it in the ring at the last second, but Becky doesn't even hit her with a move. Asuka rolls into the ring and then just lays there dead and Becky pins her. That was a finish. So it is now a three-way at Hell in a Cell. And that was Raw. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Rusty. Rusty Rose. 10, 4, 86. <laughs> dusty. Is it Rusty or Dusty? <laughs> it's, uh, it's Dusty. Harmon Blanchett. <laughs> okay, out of ring. Her, and Herman way, and Blanchett. <laughs> Harwin. Way back then, they had cha- chain barricades. <laughs> And then they had a tag team with Rich, Fl- uh, Rick Flair, and some more guys, and so that was that. I'm just too- who who <laughs> did Rusty Rhodes wrestle? If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.